A very brief history of the rude mechanical orchestra. Once upon a time, there was boredom. The people were tired of chanting the same demands over and over and over to a government that couldn't have cared less. In 2004, it was time to wake up. There were people all over New York City with an itch to yell and honk and dance and bang their discontent and hopes for a different future. So they found each other. Inspired by the swirling spectacle of Bread and Puppet and the WTO protests of Seattle, Sarah woke up from a dream one morning and knew she had to start a marching band and bring it to the 2004 March for Women's Lives in DC. Michelle had her own dream, along with others from the Hungry March Band, of bringing together a marching band that would stand up to the monstrous 2004 Republican National Convention in New York City. Thanks to an unknown but savvy organizer from NARAL, the National Abortion Rights Action League, Sarah and Michelle were connected, and together they hatched a plan for jubilant protest. Along with their co-conspirators, Naomi, Joe, Ben, Rich, and Quince, they recruited other like-minded souls and went forth in green and black. The rude mechanical orchestra was born. After the dust cleared from the RNC, the group decided it had an enduring mission to work in solidarity and amplify the social justice movement in New York City through the energizing power of music and dance. As the Latinx feminist Aurora Levins Morales writes, solidarity is not a matter of altruism. Solidarity comes from the inability to tolerate the affront to our own integrity of passive or active collaboration in the impression of others, and from the deep recognition of our most expansive self-interest. From the recognition that, like it or not, our liberation is bound up with that of every other being on the planet, and that politically, spiritually, in our heart of hearts, we know that anything else is unaffordable.
lot of you kids are having a hard time, but I just want you to know I've been there and I know what it feels like. It can be really lonely when you feel, you know, when you feel like nobody is there for you and nobody understands you or wants to accept you. In school, I got made fun of by the girls and the boys. I'm from a small town here in Chicago, and my life was hell through high school. Um, I tried to commit suicide. I was very upset with life. I'm from Texas, and I grew up in a very religious community. So when I was younger, all I wanted was to be normal. But uh, now, when I think about that, it seems really boring. Being trans is kind of hard. I'm being more kind of the weird kid, and uh, having a hard time making friends, and having a hard time, you know, being being proud of the things that, that make me different. I once thought that what made me different was what made me horrible, but now I know it's what makes me amazing. Now just love yourself, believe in yourself. I love you very much. I love you. You're not alone. <laughs> don't let people push you around and don't let people, you know, make you ashamed of who you are. The genius is the one most like himself. And if you're honest about who you are, then you will find people who really love you.
on June 20th, we will come together to lift the voices and faces of poverty in the midst of pandemic for a massive historic online gathering that will embolden us, strengthen us, and prepare us to fight for the kind of society we know we so badly need and deserve. Bound to lose. You're bound to lose. You fascist bound to lose.